Open your eyes. Maybe you'll see. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 action comedy movies of the century so far. For this list, we'll be looking at the greatest, most fun, and most impactful action comedies to have been released since 2000. Can you see yourself watching these movies in another 20 years? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Jumanji – Welcome to the Jungle No one could have predicted the runaway success of this movie. A Jumanji sequel wasn't really necessary, and many people met it with skepticism. The original is a childhood favorite, and there's simply no replacing Robin Williams. But Welcome to the Jungle took the basic concept of Jumanji and made it fresh for modern viewers. Gone was the board game, replaced with a video game. Add in a good dose of jokes, some solid action sequences, and a star-studded cast with impeccable chemistry, and you have a surprisingly great reboot. Smoldering intensity. What the hell are you doing? It even held its own against The Last Jedi at the box office and went on to gross nearly a billion dollars. Call out its name, everyone! Jumanji! 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 Number 19, The Other Guys. Cop movie parodies are a dime a dozen, but very few of them actually work. It's easy to make fun of cop movies, but it's hard to do so intelligently. Get over here. Mm. Not, not right now. Okay. Look, they're not all first round picks, okay? It's even harder to do so in 2010, when all the possible jokes had been seemingly played out. Somehow, the other guys managed to do it. The script from Adam McKay and Chris Henchy is filled with great observations and hilariously undermines the cop genre. But what makes this movie work so well is its cast. Oh my god, how do they walk away in movies without flinching when it explodes behind them? There's no way! Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg have wonderful chemistry. Michael Keaton gives a fantastic supporting performance as the captain, and Samuel L. Jackson and Dwayne Johnson have what could very well be the greatest cameos of the decade. You thinking what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes. Number 18, MacGruber. Saturday Night Live movies are notorious for being, well, terrible. SNL belongs on the small screen, and stretching a funny five-minute sketch into 90 minutes of story rarely works. I'm sorry, I must have heard wrong, because I thought I just heard you say, MacGruber about that, look, I'm taking you off the case. That's exactly what I said. Damn it, Jim, you can't do that! But in the midst of all the horrible SNL movies throughout the years, MacGruber stands proud. I'm in. The movie is based on Will Forte's famous sketch, which sees a comedian and his writing team parodying the cop genre, MacGyver to be precise. While a bomb at the time, MacGruber has grown a sizable cult following, thanks to its quotable script and bizarre, over-the-top nature. Nothing about it is predictable, and its violence is borderline grotesque. MacGruber is intentionally provocative, and many people love that about it. Okay, don't worry, we got your back. We're only seven blocks away, so if anything goes down... Seven blocks? <laughs> okay, you got me, about 20 blocks. Number 17, Machete. Spy Kids, this is not. The character of Machete stemmed from the Spy Kids franchise, but the genre changed in 2007 with the release Grindhouse. As a little Easter egg to his fans, Robert Rodriguez included a fake trailer within Grindhouse promoting a violent, standalone Machete movie. He was given an offer he couldn't refuse. I cost the most, because I'm the best there is. But fans loved it, and Rodriguez decided to just make the movie itself. And everyone is glad he did. Machete is an intentionally ridiculous, over-the-top action film that harkens back to the exploitation B-movies of the 70s. This includes grainy visuals, absurd violence, and hilariously stupid lines. Please, Father, have mercy. God has mercy. 
I don't. Absolutely none of it is meant to be taken seriously. Just sit back and bask in Rodriguez's gleeful madness. Number 16, Date Night. This movie proves the importance of casting. Starring Steve Carell and Tina Fey at the height of their cultural dominance, Date Night gets by largely on their incredible chemistry. So I will give you three seconds okay. to give us back the flash drive. Wow, okay, the three seconds game? Sorry, sir, but you know, I play this every day with she my kids. That That's not scary. Well, I will blow a hole in your face. They play a bored married couple whose lives are briefly spruced up by a case of mistaken identity. It's a fun concept to center a story around, and both Carell and Faye keep things chugging along nicely. They make the Fosters both sympathetic and enjoyable to watch, not to mention entirely relatable. Your eyes look crazy. I know because I'm losing it. What are we gonna do? I am losing it. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We gotta get out of here. We gotta go home. The cast is nicely rounded out by a who's who of familiar faces, including Mark Wahlberg, James Franco, Mila Kunis, and Mark Ruffalo. Date Night has a great premise and a fantastic cast to make it all work. I'm gonna count to three, and every one of you boys is gonna put down your guns! Is she serious? One! I think she's serious. Two! She's kidding, right? Number 15, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Robert Downey Jr. has called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang his best film, and we have to agree. Look up idiot in the dictionary, you know what you'll find? A picture of me? No! The definition of the word idiot. It's certainly up there, at least. Very loosely based on an obscure noir novel from Brett Holiday, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang serves as a refreshing blend of parody and straight mystery. The film gleefully sends up the hard-boiled detective genre with tongue-in-cheek satire, but it also takes its complex story seriously. Not only is Shane Black's script sharp as a tack, but he struck comedic gold with the partnership of Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer. In a landscape of silly comedy movies, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is wickedly smart and has a keen eye for the tropes of a classic genre of fiction. You put, put a live round in that gun. Oh well, yeah, there was like an 8% chance. Eight was it just 8? 8? Yeah. Who taught you math? math? more, I don't know. Number 14, The Rundown. It's always nice seeing an Indiana Jones-esque film that's actually good. We're not going to be able to get out of here. All this land, patch your own, the road that you're on, the air that you're breathing right now, patch your own at all. Shut up. The Rundown is a classic adventure movie, starring Dwayne Johnson as a bounty hunter who is hired to find the son of his employer. The son is in Brazil, attempting to find a treasured golden artifact known as the Devil's Cat. Typical adventure hijinks follow. You like thunderstorms, huh? But you do, right? Little thunder. Stop it. Little lightning. Stop it. Thunder, lightning, thunder, lightning, ears. Oh! Oh! The movie is very well made, complete with fun action sequences, an entertaining old school adventure story, and great bits of casting. Johnson and Sean William Scott share golden chemistry, and Christopher Walken makes for a typically excellent villain. There's just nothing like a good adventure movie. Boom shakalaka turtle! Number 13, In Bruges. Writer-director Martin McDonough has slowly proven himself the modern-day master of the crime movie. Do I look like I do? You do, actually. <laughs> do I look like I shoot people? In Bruges was his feature-length debut, starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson as hitmen hiding out in the titular city. McDonough strikes a pitch-perfect balance between comedy and crime elements, as his movie contains some gut-busting lines and genuinely unsettling moments. Much of the humor is derived from the characters' interactions, as they share differing opinions on Bruges and their predicament. You know you're just the rudest man! The rudest man! What's all that about? The story is almost an excuse to watch two different men have wacky adventures in an old European city. Ray, did we or did we not agree that if I let you go on your date tonight, we do the things I want to do today? But the violence is incredibly graphic when it comes, and it reminds viewers of the depraved world they find themselves in. Number 12, Spy. 
like the cop genre, spy movies have been parodied to death. Three, two, one, now! Oh dear, did I forget to knock? It seems impossible to mine new material for these kinds of spoofs, but Paul Feig and his team of filmmakers managed to do it with the simply titled Spy. Melissa McCarthy proved herself a capable leading actress by playing the bumbling Susan Cooper and earning herself a Golden Globe nomination in the process. But she certainly isn't alone. The movie contains a fantastic ensemble of winning comedic performances, from Rose Byrne's icy coldness to Jason Statham's turn as a comedic version of the macho action hero he typically plays. Here's what we do. I go into the face-off machine, get a whole new face. I turn up, they never know me. Spies single-handedly breathe new life into the dying spoof genre. You're gonna get yourself killed. Nothing kills me. I'm immune to 179 different types of poison. I know, because I ingested them all at once. Number 11, Pineapple Express. This is a different type of stoner comedy, one that nicely blends elements of dumb stoner movie tropes with genuinely well-made action. The violence really ramps up in the second half of the film, when Rogan and Franco's characters get increasingly tied up in a world of organized crime and rich marijuana dealers. We should call the police right away. We can't call the police. The police oh. were the murderers. That's what's we so can't call flippin' the police. scary. They were the murderers. They were the mur Don't Angie, argue. I swear to God. The movie is full of the hilarious improvisational humor one expects from Rogan comedies. And David Gordon Green proves a good director, capable of balancing elements of conflicting genres. There you go. Why don't you follow his lead and just chill out, man? I'm chill. I'm chill as a cucumber, man. But the real star of the show is James Franco, who flexed his hidden comedic muscles and earned himself a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor. We made it, guys. We made it. Oh, we made it. Number 10, Kingsman, The Secret Service. This is more than a typical spy spoof. What do these do? Electrocute you. Don't be ridiculous. It's a hand grenade. Shut up. This is a movie that fully embraces the wacky nature of spy movies and elevates the stupidity with brilliant satire. There's a henchman with swords for legs. There's a device hidden inside cell phones that causes people to lose their minds and kill each other. There are high altitude balloons and exploding space satellites. But it's not just the all out wackiness that makes Kingsman a modern day classic. Manners make it. Man. There's also the sense of style, the unexpected plot developments, the inventive action sequences, and the pitch-perfect casting. Colin Firth as a James Bond figure and Taron Egerton as a chav protagonist were just brilliant choices. This ain't that kind of movie, bruv. Perfect. Number 9. Free Guy. Any original movie that can gross over $300 million in the midst of a pandemic certainly did something right. Nice skin. Thank you. That's sweet. How'd you get it? Well, uh, mostly genetics, I think. Free Guy mainly gets by on two things. Its original concept and its charming cast. Blue Shirt Guy realizes that he's a mindless NPC in a chaotic video game, and this premise alone guaranteed the movie's eventual success. It's got people all over the world asking, just who is this guy? I don't know who this guy is, but he's outskilling all these players. It's clever, it's unique, and it offers up limitless possibilities for humor and action. The fact that Free Guy weaved a genuinely interesting story through it is a testament to writers Matt Lieberman and Zach Penn. The role of the blue shirt guy was tailor-made for Ryan Reynolds, and he unsurprisingly nails it. It was nice to see an original blockbuster in theaters. Woo! Woo! Oh! Get it, y'all! Feel brand new. Number 8, Shoot 'em Up. At a brisk 86 minutes, Shoot 'em Up is basically an action scene compilation that someone can find on YouTube. The story is about a drifter who tries saving a baby from an assassin. It's a bizarre premise, yes, but it's mostly just an excuse to watch 86 minutes of ridiculous shootouts. 
Tell me the one about the baby. Maybe later. When I put you to sleep. This movie contains nothing but outrageous action from opening to closing credits, but it's filmed with such extraordinary glee and technical proficiency that it never gets tiring. The humor derives from the movie's tongue-in-cheek nature, as it doesn't take its own action seriously and makes fun of movies that do. It's a great bit of satire, and it's filmed well enough to get away with it all. Eat your vegetables. Number 7. The Nice Guys Writer-director Shane Black struck gold again with The Nice Guys, which is his attempt at a buddy cop parody. An old-school mystery film, The Nice Guys stars Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling as two very different personalities attempting to find a missing girl. Are you willing to find God? I'm trying to find Amelia. Crow and Gosling make for an unexpectedly perfect pairing. Not only do they share wicked chemistry, but their personalities and acting styles conflict with gleefully humorous results. You're in the pool? Yeah. Why? I had to question the mermaids. What were you doing while I was working? The movie also features some mesmerizing production design that transports viewers back to the 1970s, and Black's script is typically tight and razor sharp. Only he can generate belly laughs while still tantalizing viewers with a genuinely intriguing mystery and complex plot. She was murdered. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But we're gonna bring down the people who did it. Yeah, and for a deeply discounted rate. Number 6. Kung Fu Hustle this Chinese action comedy has often been described as a blend between the gritty dramas of Quentin Tarantino and a live-action Looney Tunes cartoon. It was also released around the time of Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, prompting many to label it as a comedic version of the wuxia masterpiece. <laughs> Kung Fu Hustle is gleefully different, and that's exactly what makes it such a masterpiece of the action comedy genre. It's not afraid to be different and to try blending seemingly disparate genres into one inventive package. It's a black comedy, it's a crime drama, and it's a parody of old school martial arts movies. In short, it's a lot of things that work surprisingly well together. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim vs. The World No other comic book movie is as comic booky as Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. You want to fight me? For her? No. I want to fight you for me. Scott earned the power of self-respect. Director Edgar Wright leans full tilt into the medium, filling his movie with outlandish action sequences and imaginative visuals ripped straight out of Brian Lee O'Malley's source material. Watch out! It's that one guy. Ha! The movie works on multiple levels, resulting in its status as a modern cult classic. It works as a breakup movie, it works as a coming-of-age comedy, and it works as a bizarre comic book movie with fight sequences that are both technically inventive and visually marvelous. We don't know how Wright did it, but he made what could very well be the most technically ambitious action movie of the decade. I'm blowing up right now! You are blowing up. Right now. <laughs> Number 4. Tropic Thunder Ben Stiller worked comedy magic with Tropic Thunder, which could very well be his greatest gift to humanity. Only this time, it's different. Who left the fridge open? The action comedy is certainly his directorial masterpiece, as he is in full command of the movie's many weaving layers. It's a traditional action comedy, but it's also a self-aware mockery of the filmmaking process. Me? I know who I am. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. It satirizes war movie cliches, self-obsessed creatives, and the Hollywood industry, all while telling a genuinely hilarious story rooted around the funniest misunderstanding of all time. And of course, 
there's the legendary performance of Robert Downey Jr., who earned himself an Oscar nomination for playing the pretentious Kirk Lazarus. Oscar nods are very rare for comedies, but Downey proved that it can be done. Hello, Mr. Mantis. You're beautiful. Ooh. Number 3. Deadpool. Very few movies had done what Deadpool did. Fine! I only have 12 bullets, so you're gonna have to share. Let's count them down. Yes, there were darker and more violent superhero movies out there, but none attained the same level of popularity. Deadpool became a cultural phenomenon, while those other movies squandered and at best became cult classics. So what made it work so well? There's the fact that Deadpool subverted the MCU, offering up extreme violence, a self-depreciating tone, and a script steeped in parody. It let the industry know that there was a huge market for mature, R-rated superhero films. Do you like what you see? No. You look like an avocado. And of course, there's Ryan Reynolds' impeccable performance. He seemed destined for the role of Wade Wilson, and it helped revitalize his career following a string of box office bombs. We can thank Deadpool for it all. We expecting Sam Jackson show up with an eye patch and a saucy little leather number? Go, go. Number two, Hot Fuzz. Edgar Wright is the modern day master of the action comedy, and Hot Fuzz is arguably his greatest achievement. If you'd have paid attention to me in school, you'd understand that it's not all about gunfights and car chases. That was brilliant. Co-written with Simon Pegg, Hot Fuzz parodies both the cop and detective genres in hilarious and intelligent fashion. The script is brilliantly constructed, with the movie mirroring itself in many surprising ways and relying on callbacks to generate humor and plot developments. It's also spectacularly edited by Chris Dickens, both in terms of structure, pacing, and technicality. Finally, Iconic one-liners are peppered throughout the movie, and the star-studded British cast give great performances, even by their sky-high standards. Help me. Uh, um, okay, we get a proper cordon up, we let the fire crews finish their stuff, and then we get forensics in to do a thorough sweep of the house. Very good. What he said. In short, it's a masterpiece of the genre, and arguably the most intelligently constructed action comedy of all time. Maybe they're not here. Wait here. Don't go in on your own. Don't worry. He knows what he's doing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 21 Jump Street both 21 Jump Street and its surprisingly great sequel are modern masterpieces of the action comedy genre, but nothing beats the original. I think you idiots are perfect. You're officially transferred. All right. That's okay. great. Well, where should we report to? This film brilliantly weaves together elements of detective mysteries, teen high school comedies, and cop movie bombast, all while endlessly making fun of itself for merely existing. Dude? Everybody's too strapped in. Just stay with the one strap. I can't, I can't, I can't right now. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't succumb to the peer pressure. The action and direction are great, but what really makes 21 Jump Street work is the script from Michael Bacall. It's sprinkled with self-aware mockery, using its very story to comment on unnecessary reboots and rose-tinted nostalgia. The movie is fully aware of its own silly existence, and it utilizes this knowledge to great and uproarious effect. It's hilarious, it's smart, and somehow it still works as a genuine action movie with a great story. We're like in the end of Die Hard right now, but it's our actual life. <laughs> it's crazy. Number one or two? Three. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.